uh, to you uh, and uh, thank you for this inviting and uh, first of all i would i would like to to thank to Gilmar to invite me to to participate on uh, in this event and um, i am so glad to 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 be here today and uh, i hope to 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 share with you some important um, informations about global warm and uh, world food issues um, my name is Poliana Begami. I am a food engineer and uh, I work at the uh, Department of Food Science and uh, Federal University of Lab. So, um, I would like to share with you this, uh, this information about the the global warm, how global warm is affecting out our food supply and uh, the high concentrations of carbon dioxide that uh, in, in the atmosphere uh, the most part of this high concentrations uh, uh, it's come from greenhouse gas that we put in atmosphere uh, and this this is affecting this is hard affecting our uh, our uh, our food nutrition quality because because the high concentration of carbon dioxide yeah. is affecting the atmosphere and uh, it's affecting the quality of our soil and uh, because the the weather is coming hotter and uh, the, we don't have the same soil anymore and the quality of food is decreasing and uh, it's, it's coming more difficult to produce food. Um, and the world lands and water research are being explored in unprecedented rates. Uh, and with climate change, it's put direct impression on the ability of human to feed itself. And um, what's happening? Our soil is it's passing through problems and um, our population is increasing. And some odds show to us that uh, in 2050, we are going to have 10 billion people in the earth. And uh, today we already have about uh, 800 million pe people uh, already living in a situation uh, of uh, food insecurity because we don't we can't produce enough food to everybody or if we can produce uh enough food we can't to to send to everybody or to conservate to everybody and or people can't buy everybody can't buy food so um we already live in a hard situation today and uh, this situation is coming worse. Uh, a lot of information that I am going to, to share with you today, I got uh, um, I got in United Nations report that was prepared uh, by more than uh, 100 experts from 52 countries. So it's a good material, and um, this happened last year in the final year so this is uh the information that i am that that i am showing to you today uh is recent and um about this about this report half billion people are living places that that is uh, places that is turning into desert and uh, soil is being lost between 10 and 100 times faster than it's forming so we are losing our our soil and climate change related disasters f and uh three fifty million three hundred fifty million people every year um so the situation is coming is coming worse so fast and um this united nations report show to to us uh, a lot of information about that and propose some 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 keys to change the situation and i i am going to show you today um 
we have a lot of problems with uh, uh, global warm and climate change. One of them is the is extreme weather threaten uh, that should disrupt our food supply. Uh, for example, floods, droughts, storms, and um, this this uh, this is threatening to our our production of food, our crops, and um, and this is another problem. Uh, food shortages affect poor parts of the world more than richest one. So we already have people in uh, living in uh, food insecurity in poor parts of the world, and this part of the world uh, are more vulnerable to be affected about uh, with global warming. So um, the, the perspectives are not good. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, we, we really need to, to do something really fast. Uh, according to Europe Commission, um, displacement events are increasing because of it, because a lot of people uh, is already living in really hard situations. They can't uh, have food, enough food to live, so they need to, to leave their countries or hometown. And uh, displacement events are coming are increasing i i i bring to you this graphic that show that in russian um the events related with flood are increasing a lot and this this graphic is about the top 10 countries with most displacement uh due to weather events so russian have a lot of weather events, extreme weather events. Um, and uh, what this graph can show to us that is that climate change uh, affects our crops in different forms. For example, in Russia, we have a lot of flood, but in Spain, we have a lot of white fire. In Brazil, we have a, a dryer, for example droughts and um, but all of these events are um, affecting our crops our capacity to produce food uh, the climate change is accelerating the hate of soil loss and land degradation like i like i told before and uh, the predictions are not good and uh, um probably we are going to lose uh, between two and six percent of our loss by decade and uh rise temperatures that that uh, uh because of the global warm uh cut crop yields and harm livestock so uh our population it's increasing we need more food and uh, we already have a lot of people in a insecurity uh, food and we need to produce more food but the global warm uh, is is making this process more difficult so this, the perspectives are not good probably we are uh, more people are are going to be in a worse situation and um, those chains that I that I told before uh, threatening to exceed the ability of agriculture industry to adapt, it. and uh, maybe we we are going to have more people hungry. Um, and uh, I I bring to you some informations about how our food system impacts the climate, and uh, our livestock contribute contributes today with thirty percent of total greenhouse gas emission and 80% uh, of global deforestation and uh, use 70% 70 70 of uh, fresh water. And about the uh, greenhouse gas em uh, emission, um, how, can, how you can see the agriculture uh, uh, 
is responsible for a lot of greenhouse uh, greenhouse gas emission and um, and the, the the livestock is responsible uh, for it and 30 percent it's because of red meat beef pork and lamb uh, warmer temperatures we mean mean greater yields of some crops at high latitudes but on the whole the climate change is hurting the av 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 availability of food because decreased yields and lost land like I told before uh, and because of er erosion desertification and rising seas um, and important information is overall if em emissions of greenhouse continue to rise so will food costs so uh, if we put everything together, uh, food are going to cost more and the, the, uh, our crops, the, the yield are, are, are going to decrease and uh, we are going to have more people. Uh, we need to produce more food. We already have food insecurity. If you put everything together, look at this scenario, the things are really bad. And uh, ab uh, some information uh, about the, the temperature said that uh, above two degrees of global warm, there could be an increase of 100 million or more of the population that, that uh, at risk of hunger. So um, the world is, is working, trying to avoid this this number and um, a lot of countries it's already working to to avoid uh, this increase of two degrees and um, they are trying to to maintain this this increase of temperature in 1.5 degrees celsius um, if the temperature increase more than that, uh, we are going to, to be in trouble and because uh, the pressure on food production will be, will be too hard. And um, about this, this, uh, this image, this picture, uh, I just uh, bring to you how climate change is affecting our crops uh, and we are losing n important nutrients and uh, our production is not the same anymore and we have more spread we are more we have more pests in our crop so uh, our capacity to produce food is is really different with the global warm and um, the, uh, the really big challenge is how to produce more food in this situation that's coming worse to more people. Because in uh, 2050, uh, we are going to have more people. So we need to produce more food and reduce the gas emission. Because if you continue to, to put... Uh, this, this gas in our planet, the situation is, is, uh, is going to be worse. So we need to produce more food with less gas emission. So this is a really, really big challenge. Um, it, uh, if you analyze what I said now, uh, protecting food supply and cut greenhouse emission um, can also come into conflict with each other. Exactly because the, what I told before, uh, when you want to, in, to increase the food production, you produce more uh, greenhouse gas and uh, you degradate more the soil and you use a lot of water. And um, so this is, how to do it and cutting greenhouse emissions at the same time. It's like impossible. 
but of course, um, we have some possibilities to change the situations, but we need to really start now because we don't have time anymore. Um, just information that uh, the mitigation, only the mitigation is not going to, to solve our problems. For example, uh, if we plant a lot of trees and uh, to, to reduce the greenhouse, um, we need to do it. We need to plant so many trees and the price, is, the price of food uh, is going to increase. So it's not the, there is no single solution. We need to associate mitigation or with adaptation and um, uh, use the technologies and uh, improve our, our production. Um, like I told, we need a food system more efficient and we need to adapt it to, to change. And um, we need to change how our food is production and distribute. Uh, we, have, we need to have re-evaluation uh, the, the way that we are using our land and uh, how the, our agriculture is working and the way that we are using our soil and uh, we need to, to this, this, we need to, to change our crops maybe or this, uh, do some crop diversification and um, anyway, we need to really we really need to change our agriculture um, and a really important information is about waste food Today we are wasting a lot of food, and this wasting is contributing to to our uh, greenhouse gas emission. Because to produce this food uh, uh, means that we are putting more greenhouse gas uh, in the atmosphere. But this food are not going to be eat because we are wasting food, and uh, this is a uh, this is a problem. We really, we really need to change this, this behavior because um, like you can see, 6% of global greenhouse gas emission come from food losses and waste. And part of this come from the consumer. So we, we need to change the behavior of consumer and of course, we need to decrease the loss in supply chains too. And uh, about the, the, the Canadian, and uh, they, they, are, uh, they are losing a lot of food. 60% uh, of food Canadian two way could have been eaten. So, uh, so if we, we stop to waste food, how we are doing today, we can reduce the, our, our uh, greenhouse emission, uh, greenhouse uh, gas emission. Um, some uh, the the uh, United Nations uh, they propose some changes, including better access to credit farms. And uh, because the whole system needs to change, and this uh, they need a different agenda to to produce food, and uh, they propose to work with, for example, indigenous people, uh, how they manage the land because they have some some habits, the knowledge about how to to deal with land and how to produce food. And maybe it's time to learn with them uh, because they can do it maybe better than we are doing today. And, uh, and um, it's necessary to act now because if we continue losing time to do something that 
uh, is really help us. The situation probably is going to be worse, and uh, we are we are walking to a, to a way that maybe the solutions are going to be more difficult. I bring to you um, an article that come from Nature, and uh, I can send to you by WhatsApp later because this article is really good. Uh, it's about options for keeping the food system with environmental limits. And the, the other article that I bring to you is reducing risk to food insecurity for climate change. They are, um, both propose some change. Uh, and um, after we re read the both, what I can conclude is a single measure is not enough. Uh, we need a synergistic combination of measure uh, and only mitigations is not enough too. We need to, to, to we need mitigation and adaptation uh, to change our situation. Um, the 2020 United Nations World War Development Report focus on challenges, opportunities, and potential response uh, in terms of adaptation, mitigation, and improved resilience that can be addressed through improved water management. Uh, according to this report, we need we we need to to change the way that you deal with our water supply because food security, human health, urban and rural sediment, energy production, industrial development, everything is related with war. And uh, we need to, to take care with our water because this is, can impact everything. And uh, this report, it's, uh, I have this document too, I can send to you later. Uh, the Future of Food and Agriculture, Alternative Pathways to 2050. And uh, inside this, this uh, report, we have some in, um, interesting topics. For example, climate change challenge for all dimensions of food and agriculture. Uh, and greenhouse gas emission, climate change, and crop yields, technical, change and climate change impacts. So uh, I don't have a lot of time today to talk more about any of uh, of these topics, but I can send you this document if uh, someone is interested to read. And uh, this is another report. And um, uh, in this report, we have a lot of uh, pathways to change our situations too. I have this document too and I can send you. And um, uh, what I called to, to, to get uh, from this is there is no single solution. Everybody says the same. We need to act, uh, we, we need to do a lot of things. For example, don't waste a lot of food, change our the way that we are producing our food, uh, reduce our gas emission, uh, change our energy system, the way that we deal with water, and uh, we need to change a lot of a lot of things to to avoid um, the food food security in in future. And uh, I bring, uh, I have this report too, and uh, there is a website about Cities 100. I don't know if you if you already know about this. This is a this is a project, and um, a lot of cities is working to to avoid the uh, the damage that is caused uh, that's uh, that come from the global warm and they already uh, they already they are working to avoid this and change a lot of things in their cities and uh, in this report we can see what a lot of 
really big cities are doing to avoid uh, the damage. And uh, we can see, for example, what Rio de Janeiro in Brazil is doing because uh, or, or they are want to do in future to avoid the, the change uh, that the, the, the change that come from climate change. And uh, with this document, we can have a lot of ideas what to do in our cities, for example. And uh, they explain to why uh, 1.5 uh, degree Celsius is most important number for the world cities. And like I told before, more than it, if we, if we don't stop, uh, if, you, if you, we increase our temperature more than this, um, our situation is going to be really, really bad and uh, we need to avoid uh, a number, an increase more than it. And uh, in this report, we have uh, 12 areas, uh, major, that they plan to change in the in their um, in those cities and one of them is sustainable food system and they have a lot of informations how to, to change our production of food and uh, to to avoid hungry and uh, according according this 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 documents that i bring to you today we have some key challenges to follow uh, and one of them is changing the research culture to become more action oriented uh, i research to focus on outcomes because we don't have time anymore change in how food is production and distribute and we need to re-evaluation of uh, the, the way that we are using our land and uh, the way that we are management our soil uh, our crop diversification um, increase the productive of land um, we need to there uh, we need to change the, the our portfolios to farmers communities and countries and um, we need service and programs uh, that uh, that allocate investments in effective and efficient way in a whole system. We need to integrate the whole system, not and look to poor uh, countries. Um, better access to credit for farmers in development countries. We need to address the. Uh, we need to address the, the the people that are in vulnerable situation. Uh, shift consumer behavior, and uh, focus on reduce the 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 losses, uh, food loss, and uh, maybe try to change the diet too um uh, try to 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 try to change a bit the diet and take out maybe meat that come from livestock for example united kingdom they they have some programs that um people are already following uh, they are trying to reduce 30 percent of of meat of diet and this is already helping uh, about the gas em uh, greenhouse gas emission and uh, we need to com combine adaptation and mitigation because just uh, one of them is not enough to to change our scenario um so to miss to meet this challenge size must work hand in hand with practitioners and policymakers to devise sensible options that meet current needs and capacity try try out best bets and learn from experience so um, the conclusion is 
uh, get out of the situation is not easy and uh, uh, we need to work together every country uh, and uh, everybody needs to work together in, in a lot of in, in different majors to change our situations and to avoid a hunger in future thank you Thank you, Poliana. Thank you very much.